Hello and welcome on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. And we just invite you again to prepare for yourself a little bit of bread and wine for our celebration of Holy Communion and to light a candle in recognition of the Spirit's presence with us in this time of word and sacrament. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Thank you. Well, today is a significant moment as we continue this journey uh, through the timeline of the Old Testament. As we continue to uh, construct for ourselves a, a framework in which we can hold the major stories sections of the Bible as a whole. And today we encounter for the first time David, the future great king of Israel. No other person other than Jesus is mentioned more times in the Bible than David. Specifically, uh, this morning we have the story of the prophet Samuel anointing David as king. Samuel, who we met last Sunday, Samuel who learned as a young boy to hear the Lord's voice and to respond, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Samuel appears at a critical moment in Israel's history. The Lord calls Samuel to lead the people into a new future, a future in which the people of Israel want a king, a king like all the other nations around them. Even though both the Lord and Samuel caution the people, that having a king brings its own challenges and burdens. When Samuel is old, the people come to him and say, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us, then, a king to govern us, like other nations. And the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. And in spite of the fact that Samuel makes clear to the people all that they will subjugate themselves to in giving power to a king, the people respond, we are determined to have a king over us. And the Lord responds to Samuel, listen to their voice and set a king over them. And then comes the first king of Israel, King Saul. And for a while things are good, but soon Saul exhibits faithlessness to the God of Israel. And the Lord speaks again to Samuel, which is the beginning of our text today. The Lord says, How long will you grieve, Samuel, over Saul? I have rejected him from being king. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And then comes the wonderful story of Jesse presenting his sons before Samuel, beginning with the oldest. And Samuel, even in his old age, is still growing in his ability to listen to the Lord's voice. Seeing Jesse's oldest son, Samuel thinks, surely the Lord has anointed this one before me. But what did the Lord say to Samuel? Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And of course, they go through all of Jesse's seven sons. But each one finds a no from the Lord. 
Samuel is stumped. He didn't expect this. Now what? Samuel no, no doubt wondered what to do next. And so he says, Are all your sons here? To which Jesse replies, Well, the youngest is still at home taking care of the sheep. And when the lad David is finally summoned and finally appears, the Lord speaks to Samuel saying, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. And in a little bit of irony in our text, it didn't hurt that according to our text, David was also, as it says, ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The point of the story is not lost. We can appreciate and find comfort in the fact that for each of us, the Lord is more concerned with our character than with our outward appearance. More concerned than where we stack up on the popularity contest for beautiful people. The disposition of the heart matters to God. The interior life matters to God. God sees the real person inside each of us. And in spite of all that parades around us today for power and importance and vain glory, to the Lord, character still matters. And so we can rejoice with the Lord and say, take heart. All is not lost. Decency and goodness and truth still matter to the Lord. Those inner characteristics, that inner character is not hidden from the Lord. In our narrative lectionary readings, today is our only chance to really uh, talk about David. Next week already we'll move on to David's son Solomon. So today we also acknowledge that David was a complicated and flawed person also. At this point in the story, uh, David is still very young, has not yet battled with Goliath. David will go on to have many uh, struggles with King Saul, uh, many life-threatening situations. Once on the throne, David will uh, be confronted by his internal demons, his um, taking advantage of Bathsheba, his killing of her husband Uriah. He has blood on his hands, yet he is also driven by his passion for the God of Israel. David will bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. David will centralize the worship of Israel in Jerusalem. David will unite all 12 tribes and make Jerusalem its capital. He will expand its borders, the borders of the kingdom, and the good fortunes of Israel. And he will model the way of God's grace for all of us. In acknowledging his failures and his sin, David flees to the mercy of Israel's God in these words from Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David gives example that time and time again, Israel's God, is a God of steadfast mercy and love. All is not lost. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. God's covenant promises endure forever. That promise given so long ago to Abraham and the promises given through Moses. And even now a promise that will come to David, that through David, 
there will always be a descendant upon the throne of David. Made sure for us in the announcement to be heard very soon again. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Christ coming from that Hebrew word Messiah, meaning anointed one. To listen for God is not to see with our eyes, but to listen with our hearts and to trust the unseen work of God. That God's redemptive reign is still at work to overcome racism, that God's redemptive reign is still at work to right the sins of sexism and bigotry and greed and privilege, of exploitation of the poor and the disadvantaged, and of the concerns of our environment, and of the assault on truth. And so, like David, we will pray again and again along our journey, trusting that God still makes new beginnings possible. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Group hug. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of the ages of the gift of your Son, who pro proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broken, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.